Hi, my explicit listener. It gives us great joy to come your way today. We are pleased to welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. This is Daylight Magazine. On today's program, we have live songs, biblical analysis, and the moment of truth. I am your presenter for today's program. My name is Jeffrey Agbodo. It is now time to listen to a delightful song. The song you just heard was sung in a local dialect in Ghana called Chi, and it says, The God we serve is always faithful and trustworthy, and his promises are true. A-W-R, Ghana, voice of hope. Voice of hope. 
You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Banner, Voice of Hope. Throughout life, man has gone through different phases of realities and experiences. Out of these experiences, the Christian is drawn closer to God. To draw lessons from Christian experiences, sit back as we present to you Biblical Analysis. Welcome, beloved, to Biblical Analysis. We are still talking about the first advent. And last week, we left off at a very interesting point. God being so good, we have Pastor A.Y. Bryant Coker and Pastor Josiah Ando, who are both lecturers from the School of Theology and Missions, Valley View University, here with us. My name is Andrew Boatin Bexen. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Pastor Bryant Coker, I want to continue from where you left off last time. Now, did Christ have something that we didn't have as a human being whilst he was on earth? If he had, then the purpose of salvation is defeated. If he had something that we do not have, if he had an advantage, then the devil can accuse and say, look at what you're doing. You have something they don't have. Mm. And so they can never attain it. But he was fully human. Unless God is telling us lies. That Christ, you know, was partial human being mm -hmm. and something extra. But if he was fully human, as the Bible tells me, he was man and was tempted in all ways as we are. And yet he was without sin. The reason that he was without sin was not because he had a particular advantage that we can't have. All the resources of living, righteous, holy pure lives are available to us. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of we fully committed. But you see, our nature, our propensity is towards sin. And the little slight move, we fall into it. Mm. You know, so it's like as Luther would say it, a peccato, and, you mm -hmm. know, we are sinful and also righteous. The idea is that he came to show us the way to live. Mm. By his life of dependence, prayer, commitment, he has shown it is possible hmm. that human beings... You see that the Bible mentions some characters, and God declared Job as upright, one who eschews evil. One God made a declaration. Hmm. There are people that have been made. And so, if the Bible has mentioned some people that they were living upright, and God even acknowledged... Or have you considered my man, it's whatever, right. my servant Job, my, you know, Abraham, whatever. So it is possible. But the fact is, if we are not careful, if you do it, you want to show I have done it. Mm -hmm. You will not acknowledge that it is grace that makes you be able to accomplish. Because if we realize that even becoming holy or being able to live virtuous life is not within you. Mm -hmm. It is God. That's why he tells us in Rwanda, it is God who gives us the grace even to repentance. It is come from God. So if you can rely solely on God, I'm telling you, it's possible. So the answer to your question, yeah. Jesus Christ, while on earth mm -hmm. during his first advent, yeah. he was 100% human. However, he was also 100% divine. Divine. That seems quite difficult to understand. Fully God, fully man. As yeah. it. Now, it, it seems quite difficult to understand to the extent that during the first century, there was a group of people, in fact, the doctrine was called docetism. Now, docetism teaches that from the point of his baptism till the point when he died on the cross, yeah. He was a spirit being. He was, he, so he was a human being from birth mm -hmm. till age 30 when he was baptized by John the Baptist. Baptist yeah. And for the three and a half years that he moved and taught and performed miracles and did all that, everything that he did, it seemed like he was a human being, but he was not a human being. That's the teaching of Docetis and that it was only after the crucifixion mm -hmm. that he became a human being again. But that doctrine is not biblical, it is not supported anyway. Because the Bible teaches that while here he became thirsty, 
He became hungry. He became sad and wept. He felt sleepy. He felt tired. He had all emotions that human beings had. He went through experiences that human beings went through, but he did not sin. So the fact that he did not sin does not mean that he was God and that the God part of him. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was tempted. He almost went into sin. Just the way we get tempted. Mm. Just the way sometimes you feel like I have to go into this sin. And you, sometimes you yield, at other times you refuse to yield. He went through that. But he left us an example that we can overcome sin because mm. it is possible. So the answer to your question once again, he was 100% human. Okay. Now let's look at the final part of his first advent. When did that end? What, what caused the end of the first advent Christ what happened just before Christ came for a mission mm -hmm. and the mission was accomplished so mission accomplished mm. and once he's finished the mission he went back that's why he said I will turn to the father the father sent me he came that's why Hebrew the writer of Hebrew will call him when you go to Hebrews 3 mm -hmm. said consider him the apostle mm -hmm. and high priest why does he call Jesus an apostle an apostle means the same one. Someone who was sent. And then when you read the whole of Hebrews, the whole book of Hebrews, take your time to study it. Mm -hmm. It is telling you about a better, a better, a better, a better covenant, a better offering, a better priest. Are you getting it? Yes. So that whatever had been in existence, yeah. they had sacrifices, mm. you know, all pointing to the lamb. Mm. The Pascal lamb. So they had sacrifices. Those sacrifices pointed to Christ. They had a high priest who was standing in, mediating for the people. Mm. He stood for Jesus Christ. Right. After the order of Melchizedek, mm. they had apostles. They were sent. Jesus was the greatest apostle. Mm. Saint one of God. So you find out that they had covenant. Jesus was a better testator, a better covenant. Mm. And so why go in for something inferior when there is a better one? And the better one was Christ. Right. And so consider him so that you don't become weary. You know, it says in, uh, I think, 12.3, Hebrews 12.3, that consider who stood against all the contradictions so that you don't become... Because he stood in spite of all that he went through, he stood to the end. He knew what he was going to go through. He knew he was going to be rejected, to be spat on, to be all this. But he knew. And he said, Lord, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. And so when he had accomplished, he had revealed God, he had declared the mission, mm -hmm. and he had done, he could say in John 17, Father, now glorify your son, mm -hmm. because what you asked me to do, I have accomplished it. Mm -hmm. And when he accomplished it, he must go back. And so he really did his work and completed it. He died to save mankind, right. because that is the only once and for all Perfect sacrifice mm. for our salvation. But before his death, yeah. he left a promise. Mm -hmm. I will come again. Mm -hmm. John 14, 1 to 3. Right. I'm going to prepare a place and I'll come again. Mm. That is also very important. Right. God being so good, we have brought the first advent to a successful end. Hopefully next time we'll have a continuation. But this time around it will be on the second advent. I have been discussing this topic with Pastor A.Y.A. A. Bryant Coker and Pastor Josiah Andor, both from the School of Theology and Missions, Valley View University. My name is Andrew Boatin Bexen. God be with you. Kindly hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. 
If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051-058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. And without God, we can't achieve anything meaningful. For this reason, it is prudent to listen to and apply the Word of God in our lives. Please let's listen to the Word of God on Moment of Truth. Beloved in the Lord, once more again, we want to welcome you to AWR as we listen to the discourse, Wait Upon the Lord. When we turn to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 to 7, we see Elijah, the man of God from Tishbite, on the command of the Lord, he went to sit by the brook of Kerit. It was a time when Israel has gone into apostasy under the king Ahab. Israel has turned their back to their God and following Baal. Baal, beloved, was a god of fertility. He was a god of tender. And when Jezebel, who was brought in by Ahab, the princess of Sty and Sidon, came to the land of Israel, 
This woman promoted idol worship, Baal worship in the land of Israel. And Baal was promoted as a God who allowed the crops to grow, who allowed the rain to come, who would bring prosperity into the life of Israel. So Israel, beloved, turned their back onto their God and began to worship Baal. Because they were peasant farmers, they saw the prospect of Baal as better than that of God. Because Jezebel vehemently actually propagated the doctrines of Baal and Israel believed and turned their back to his God. When this happened, the man of God, Elijah, beloved, challenged Israel, challenged Baal at the very core of his strength that I am praying to the God who created the heavens and the earth, who brings rain and allows the crops to grow, that if Baal is God, let him uh, allow the rain to fall and let the crops grow. And the Bible says, for some time there was no rain upon the face of the earth, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and God said, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Kerit, which flows into Jordan. You know, Kerit is a very uh, a tributary of the river Jordan and God asked Elijah to go and sit at the brook of Kerit and the Bible says at that place he would drink from the brook and have commanded the ravens to feed you there so Elijah found himself sitting by the brook of Kerit God did not send him to the river Jordan, that was a bigger river, but to its tributary, a smaller river. God placed Elijah over there to learn something practical for his life, that Elijah should learn how to wait upon the Lord. Whilst Elijah was by the brook of Kerit, he was drinking and he was eating, because ravens brought him food in the morning and the evening, and things seemed to be going on all right by the brook of Kerit. But beloved, we want you to know that even when God places you at a point, challenges will come. Even when God leads you, difficulties may come. So Elijah went to the brook of Kerry by the command of the Lord to sit there to drink and to eat from for, uh, uh, through the ravens and to drink from the brook. But the Bible says in the process of time, was Elijah was staying at the brook of Kerit, and as he lifted up his eyes and to look at the river Kerit, the water level was dropping day in, day, night, because there was no rain, because there was no dew upon the face of the earth. So the hope of Elijah, his very sustenance, the water that he drinks to have life was drying up every day. And his hope was drying before his very presence every day as he wakes up and lifts up his eyes and look upon the water carried. It was dropping and dropping every day and hope was dying. But that was the place God placed Elijah, sit by the brook of carriage. Beloved in the Lord, when God places a man at a position, no matter what happens over there, God intends us to remain there until he again speaks to us. So the Bible says, God commanded Elijah to go and sit at the brook of Kerit, and that was the best position God placed Elijah. But over there, the hope of Elijah, the water that he drinks, that he might live, was drying up every day. What happens? What do we do? When our hopes begin to get shattered every day before our very eyes, when our beloved children, when we look at them, their lives, their characters, they begin to go wayward and we see the very hope that we have in this, our little ones, what do we do? Drying up every day. When you're very married, that the wife that you love and your husband turns his back towards you and hope begins to be shattered, what do you do? Elijah continued sitting by the brook of carriage. And the Bible says, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. But Elijah continued to sit 
by the brook of Kerit and beside the dried river. God intended that Elijah should learn the lesson of waiting upon the Lord, waiting in times of crisis, waiting to hear God speak, waiting to act when God speaks. Beloved in the Lord, maybe you see your life drying up. Maybe you see things turn upside down in your life. Maybe you have been praying and praying for God's intervention in your life, but things seem to be drying up. And you begin to ask, is there God? And if there's God, does he cares about me? Why has everything begin to fall right now in my life when I've given my life to Christ Jesus? There are examples of God's people who experienced challenges, difficulties in their lives, though they were not cause of all these challenges. You can talk about Job. The Bible says he was a righteous man, a one who eschewed evil. But in the press of time, Job went into crisis, a crisis that he knew nothing about. But as Job waited upon the Lord, the Bible says God changed his situation. God blessed him again, and God restored his blessings even two times. All that he lost was restored again because he waited upon the Lord. What do we do? When challenges come our way, what do we do when difficulties come our way? What do we do when there seems to be no hope? Are we able to see by the brook of carrot and still trust God and wait upon him until our change shall come? I want to trust the Lord, to wait upon him, to depend upon him, his thought towards you, a thought of peace and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end. That is the God we worship. Put your trust in Him and things will change and the brook of courage will still be a place of hope for your soul. May the Lord bless you and grant you grace and favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. are kindly hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051. 058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Today's program was presented by Jeffrey Abudu. Stay blessed.